uh, throws his, uh, shoots his gun into gun. In War and Peace, it's a gun and not a sponge. That's a surprise. Uh, he shoots his gun too early, we're led to believe. All right? There's a famous one in Inyegin, right? Pushkin's Ujid Inyegin. And there are lots of others, actually. So there's lots in literature. All right? There are also uh, settings which aren't exactly out of literature. So one example would be uh, in a bike race. How many of you ever watched the Tour de France? Anyone know what I mean by the Tour de France? Yeah, you could not watch it. So this is a bike race that goes around France. It takes, it takes stages. And in the Tour de France, there's a key decision. There's a game within the game. And the game within the game, I'm looking at Jake, who's a real cyclist here. But the game within the game is when do you try to break away from the pack, which is called the peloton. Right? And if you break away too early from the peloton, it turns out that you're going to get reeled in. It turns out that over the long haul, the peloton can go much faster than you. So if you break too early, they're going to catch you up. On the other hand, if you break too late, then you're going to lose because there are going to be some people in the, in the peloton who are just excellent sprinters. So if you break too late, the, the sprinters are going to, are going to win the race. All right? So you have to decide when to, when to break from the peloton. Right? This is the second most game within a game, second most important game within a game in the Tour de France. The most important game within a game is where to hide your steroids. All right. <laughs> All right. So let me give you one other example. So imagine, I'm going to give you a more economic example. It is meant to be an economics class. Imagine there's two firms, and these two firms are both engaged in R&D, research and development, and they're trying to develop a new product, and they're going to launch this new product onto the market. All right? But then the nature of this market is, maybe it's a network good, the nature of this market is there's only going to be one successful good out there. Right? Essentially, there's going to be one standard, let's say, of a software or a, a technological standard, and only one of them is going to survive. The problem is you haven't perfected your product yet. If you launch your product too early, it may not work, and then consumers are never going to trust you again. But if you launch it too late, the other side will have launched already, they will have got a toehold in the market, and you're toast. All right? So that game, that game about product launch, is like Duel, except you're launching a, uh, launching a product rather than launching a sponge. Is that right? All right? Now, all of these games have a common feature, and it's a new feature for us. It's about the nature of the strategic decision. In most of the games we've looked at in the, game, in the course so far, the strategic decision has been of the form, where should I locate? How much should I do? What price should I set? Should I stand for election or not? Right? Here, the question of the strategic decision is not of the form, what should I do? It's of the form what? When? It's of the form, when am I going to launch the sponge? We know perfectly well what you're going to do. You're going to throw the sponge. The strategic issue in question is when. All right? So the issue here is when. All right. So to analyze this, I'm going to need a little bit of notation. And let me put that notation up now. All right, so in particular, I want to use the notation PI of D to be what? Let PI of D be player I's probability, probability of hitting if I shoots at distance d, at distance d. All right, so pi of d is the probability that I will hit if he or she shoots at distance d. All right? OK, right, everyone happy with that? This is the only notation I'm going to use today. All right? And I'm going to make some assumptions about the nature of this probability. But they're not, two of the assumptions are pretty innocent. So let's draw a picture. All right, so the picture's going to look like this. Here's a, a, a graph, and on the horizontal axis, I'm going to put d. This is the distance apart of the two players. And on the vertical axis, I'm going to put p, which is the probability, or pr, the probability. All right? So here they're at distance 0, and I'm going to make an assumption about what the probability of hitting is if you're at distance 0. What's the sensible assumption? What's the, what's the probability of hitting somebody with your sponge if you're 0 distance away? One, okay, I agree, so one. All right, so the first assumption I'm going to make is if they're right on top of each other, they're going to hit with probability one. And the second assumption I'm going to make is as you get further away, this probability decreases. Right? It doesn't have to look exactly like this, but something like that. All right? And that also, I think, is that, is that an okay assumption? 
Right? As you're further away, there's a lower probability of hitting. Now, I'm not going to assume that these two players have equal abilities. For example, I don't know, I didn't ask them, but one of our two football players might be a quarterback and the other one might be a, li uh, might be a linebacker or a running back, and I'm assuming the quarterback is probably more accurate. Is that right? So I'm not going to assume that they're equally good. So it could be that their, their abilities look like this. This could be P1 of D, and this could be P2 of D. Everyone okay with that? All right. So shout this out. In this picture, who is, the, who is the better shot and who is the less good shot? Who's the better shot? One, right? One is the better shot because at every distance, if, if player one was to, th were to throw, player one's probability of hitting is higher than player two's probability of hitting as drawn. All right? Now, I don't even need to assume this. It could well be that these probabilities cross. Right? It could be that these curves cross. So it could be that player one is better at close distances, but player two is better at, at far distances. That's fine. We'll assume it's like this today, but I'm not going to use that. Okay? That's, that's, I, could, I could do away with that. All right? As drawn, player one is the better shot. Now, I'm going to make one assumption that matters, and it's really a critical assumption. All right? I'm going to make this, this assumption that keeps the math simple for today, but we have enough math to do anyway. I'm going to assume that these abilities are known. I'm going to assume that not only do you know your own ability of hitting your opponent at any distance, I'm going to assume you also know the ability of your opponent to hit you. All right. All right. Now let's look at this a second. We've got a bit of notation on the board. Let's discuss this a second. What do we think is going to happen here? In this particular example, we have a good shot and a less good shot. Who do we think is going to shoot first? Who do we think is going to shoot first? Let's, just, let's try and cold call some people. All right, so uh, you, sir, what's your name? Uh, Frank. Frank, so who do you think is going to shoot first? The, the, the better shot or the worse shot? Um, the better shot, but also depends on who steps first as well, I think. Well, let, let, okay, let, let's assume player one is going is to step first. Uh, so then if, player one. Play, so, play, so, so, so Frank thinks player one is going to shoot first, because player one is the better shot. Uh, who thinks, uh, let's see, so what's your name? Nick. Nick, who do you think is going to shoot first? Um, I think player two will shoot first. All right, so let's talk why. Why, why do you think player one was going to shoot first? Well, let's, first of all, let's, let's do a poll. How many people think the better shot's going to shoot first? How many people think the, the worst shot's going to shoot first? How many of you are being chickens and abstaining? Quite a few, right? Right, okay, okay. All right, so why do we think the better shot might shoot first? Well, because at an uh, equal distance, he has a better shot of... Because he has a better yeah. chance of hitting, all right? He has a better chance of hitting. But why do you think that the less good shot might shoot first? Um, he, know, he knows that, uh, that if P1 gets too close, he's going to win anyway. So he may as well take a shot with a lower chance, uh, you know, before, before, he, before P1 is, right. is guaranteed to hit him. Okay, okay, so we have two arguments here. The first argument is maybe the better shot will shoot first because, after all, he has a, better, a higher chance of hitting. And the other argument says, maybe the worst shot will shoot first. To what? To preempt the better shot from shooting him. All right? But now we get more complicated. Because after all, if you're the better shot, and you know that the worst shot may be going to try and shoot first to try and preempt you from shooting him, you might be tempted to shoot before the worst shot shoots to preempt the worst shot from preempting you from shooting him. And if you're the worst shot, maybe you're going to try and shoot first even earlier to preempt the better shot from preempting the worst shot from preempting the better shot from shooting the worst shot and so on. All right? So it's clear, what's clear is that this game has a lot to do with preemption. Preemption's a big idea here. But I claim it's not at all obvious. It's not at all obvious who's going to shoot first, the better shot or the worst shot. Is that right? So those, those people who abstained, raise your hands again, those people who abstained before, it seemed like it was a pretty sensible time to abstain. It's not obvious at all to me uh, who's going to shoot first here. All right? People, are people convinced that it's at least a, it's a hard problem? Yeah? Yes or no? People convinced? Yeah, okay, good. It's a hard problem. Okay, good. So what I want to do is, as a class, as a group, what I want us to do is solve this game. And I want to solve not just who is going to shoot first, I want to figure out exactly when they're going to shoot. All right? So we're going to do this in the next uh, half hour. 
And we're going to do it as a class. Right? So you're going to do it. So we're going to nail this problem, basically. All right? And we're going to do it using two kinds of arguments. One kind of argument is an argument we learned the very first day of the class. And that's a dominance argument. And the second kind of argument is an argument we've been using a little bit recently. And what kind of argument is that? What is it? Backward induction. So we're going to use dominance arguments and backward induction. And we're going to figure out not just whether the better shot or the worse shot's going to shoot, but exactly who's going to shoot when. All right. Let's keep our picture handy. Get rid of, well, I can get this down, I guess. And we'll, can we still see the picture? Yeah. All right, let's, let's proceed with this argument. All right, so to do this argument, I first of all want to establish a couple of facts. All right, my page and my notes. I want to establish two facts. And we'll call the first fact, fact A. All right. Let's go back to our two players we had before. In fact, maybe it would be helpful to have our play. Can I use our, two play our first two players as props? Can I have you guys on stage? While they're coming up. All right. Sorry, guys. I'm exploiting you a bit today. All right. Hope you both signed your legal release forms. All right. All right. Why don't you guys sit here a second so I can use you as props. So imagine, imagine that these two guys still have their sponges. All right. Let's actually uh, set this up. So, so I suppose that Shebby's, Shebby? Still, yeah. she, Shebby says a sponge, and Patrick still has his sponge. All right, and suppose it's Shebby's turn. All right, and suppose that Shebby is trying to decide whether he should throw his sponge or not. Whether he should throw his sponge or not. Can I have that other mic? Right, 